Oh, glory, God. Let's go in. Let's go in. Let's go in. Let's go in. He said, don't be terrified. Come on, don't be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Yes. Lord, it's a, it's a lot of land, God. Yeah. It's flowing with milk and honey. Do I deserve that? See, that's the problem with a lot of people today. They don't think that they deserve to receive love. Come on, come on. They think that I done done everything there is to do on this earth. But God said, no. He said, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. That's it. You are forgiven. You, you, you deserve to go in. If you've been doing right by God, if you've been staying in his word, if you've been meditating on his word, if you've been obedient to his word, he said, you're ready. He says, so Joshua, I'm going to go back to this verse here. So for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go, friend. Y'all believe God is with y'all when y'all go to school? Amen? Parents, y'all believe God is with y'all when y'all go to work or y'all go do y'all shopping or go and sit with the elderly people and pray for them, amen? Absolutely. When you go and encourage the young people, amen? When you go and minister, you evangelize, y'all believe God is with you? He said, he said, I will be, be with you wherever you go. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Amen. So Joshua, look what Joshua did in verse 10. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people go through the camp and tell the people, get your supplies ready. Y'all meditate on that. Joshua went and told the officers to tell the people, get your supplies ready. Amen? Amen? Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go into and take possession of the land the Lord your God is given for your own. Woo, glory. My God. <laughs> Look at verse 20. He said, but the Reubenites, the Gatonites, and the half tribe of the Messiah, Joshua said, remember the command that Moses, the servant of of the Lord gave you. The Lord your God is giving you rest and has granted you this land. Your wives and your children and your livestock may stay in the land that Moses gave you east of the Jordan, but all of your fighting men fully armed must cross over ahead of your brothers. You are to help your brothers until the Lord give them rest as he has done for you and until they too have taken possession of the land that the Lord has given them, after that you may go back to occupy your own land. God ain't going to allow you to have something of your own if you are not willing to help someone else. Come on, come on. He said you cannot have a vision of your own unless you fulfill the vision of the person that is placed on you. That's in Luke, I think Luke 10 and 16 or 16 and 10. And here it is, the Reubenites and the half tribes of Messiah, Joshua had to give them instruction. Because they were, they, there were some people, there was over two million, they were, some of them were just thinking about themselves. Uh -huh. Man, I can just get over there and, and I just need to get over there, you know, and I can work it out myself. But Joshua had to remind them, look here, you can't forget about the Lord thy God. He is the one that has brought us to this place. He is the one that said that I be for you, not the enemy, not mom and daddy. He said, if I be for you, then who can be against you? He is the one that said, no weapon formed against you Come shall on. prosper. Come on. That's it. He is the one that is taking you to the promised land. He is the one that you put all your trust into. That's it. That's it. That's it. Mm. In verse 16, he said, then they answered Joshua, Whatever you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. There's nothing more foul than having a soldier who would not pay attention to detail. Because it's the slightest detail that will get you killed. That's it. That's it. You miss that. Is the slightest detail that will get you killed. You're not paying attention, not being focused. He's getting ready to take you over. You got to stay focused. You got to stay in the word. You got to read the word. You got to pray. You got to fast. You can't be pushed from left to the right. All the storms that come around, you got to be focused. And 
The people say we will go wherever you said go. Because they trusted Joshua. They trusted him. Because they knew that he served God. They knew that he followed God. They knew that if, 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 if I just continue to stay in the will of God, all of this will be over. But you see how God was training them up. God did not give up on the Israelites. We are all God's people. God is not giving up on you. He would never give up on you. If he pushed that cross all the way down to Golgotha Hill and got up on top and they nailed him, crushing bones and flesh, he didn't give up then, he's not going to give up on you now. He's encouraging you to keep pushing. I know you're a single parent. I know that, that, that the husband or the, or the ex-husband ain't paid his child support. He got like $5 million left on child support. I know there's so many things that's going on around you that you, you're trying to make ends meet. But he, God, my God said, I will supply all your needs and I lavish my nephews away according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will be, will obey you. See, there was no compromise in their advantage. Come on, come on. There wasn't no, well, we, we serve Moses, but we don't know about you, Joshua. Mm -hmm. But see, there was more of, of, of those who had a warrior man child. Like, wait a minute, look here. Joshua was the one who was Moses' aide. Come on now. He was the one that stood next to Moses. He seen the glory of God. He was the one that was part of the 12 spies that went over to look at and there was only two that came back with a good report. That was Joshua and Caleb. Uh -huh. See, Joshua been trained in this. He been skilled in this. And he knew that one day I'm going to have to be brought before the people and I'm going to have to take these people over to the promised land. It was God preparing him. God is preparing you. Get ready for it. it. He's going to give you the tools that you need. It. Yeah, they may seem like we like grasshopper up against all these giants. But God said, no, there is more of us in the city than it is of them. Don't be afraid, my apostle Paul. Don't be afraid of going into the city. There are some righteous people in the city. Come on, my Lord. There, would there be 10? Come on. Can I get 10? That is righteous and holy, who's not willing to compromise the word of God just because the cunning and craftiness of men. It's the promised land, but that doesn't mean that everything's going to be peaches and cream. Because, see, we got to be trained up for it, and we are. we getting ready to go into it, saints of God. He said here, whoever rebels against your word and does not obey your word, Whatever you may command them will be put to what? To death. To death. Mm -hmm. He said, only be strong and what? Courageous. Look to your neighbor. That's the third time. Be strong, strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Come on now. Don't be worrying. So what is workers going to do? Nothing. All they're going to do is bring up high blood pressure. You going back to the doctor because you're worried over something that's not even going to change. Pray about everything. Worry about nothing. Philippians 4 and 6. It's okay to be concerned, but don't worry because worry will run you down in the mill. Be strong and courageous. Grasp that. Grab that. Hold on to that. Because there are times when, 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 when you leave out of this place and you go back to your home. Like, man, what was Pastor preaching about? I heard the word strong and I heard the word courageous. Be strong and courageous. Turn to Joshua 24 and 15. Be strong and courageous. Are you motivated enough to go in? Amen. Amen. Joshua 24 and 
14, start with 14. We talked about being born again last Sunday. Mm -hmm. About John chapter 3 when Nicodemus, who was a religious teacher, came in the middle of the night and asked Jesus, what must I do to be born again? He said, you must be born of water and you must be born of fire. Mm -hmm. There is no other way. That's the only way that you can get to heaven. You got to be born in water. And baptism is the significant of how we baptize, how you've been put down in the water. And when you come back up, all of that dead stuff, all of that, that sinful desire, all that stuff stays down there. And you're being renewed in the fullness of God. Amen. And being filled and in part with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because you are strong, you are courageous. You have the victory. Victory is already won. You are not defeated. Though it may seem that all the odds are stacked up against you, that nobody's listening to you, nobody's answering your phone, you are still strong and courageous to go in and take the land. Don't be like the other ten spies. God allowed them to go in, and he allowed Joshua and Caleb to go in, and they was the only two that came out with good report. But God allowed 12 to go in. So, something significant about that number 12. Because Jesus had 12 disciples. One turned his back on him. Come on, somebody. Joshua was part of the 12. But God used two to come back with a good report. Come on, somebody. So I'm saying to you today, when you go in, amen, don't forget about God. Don't forget about God. Don't forget about the love that he has given you. Don't forget about the patience God has given you. Don't forget about the healing God has given you. Because the healing is in the land where you're going. Not physical, but spiritually. Because unless you understand it in the spirit, you can't understand it in the physical. Unless you understand it in the heavenly term, you can't understand it in the earthly term. He's taking you to a whole nother level. You are different Amen. because you are strong. You are courageous. In Joshua 24 and 14, read that for me, our evangelist, Jackson, please, man. 14. Start with verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Not be You're right, man. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Come on, keep going. And, and put away the gods which your father served mm -hmm. on the other side of the blood in, in Egypt and serve you the Lord. Yes, ma'am. And if, if and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you would dwell. Now I want you to I want I want you to stand up and read this part right here. Because this is said over every household in this world. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on now. That's it. Amen. 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 As for me and my house, we gonna serve the Lord. Come on, no choice. Come on. We're not gonna look at these foreign gods and serve these foreign god paganism. We're not gonna add a little bit of this and add a little bit of that and and, and look at numbers, but as for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. Amen. Fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Yeah. This is Joshua talking. Throw away your gods and forefathers, worship and down the rivers in Egypt. They already crossed over the river Jordan. Now they're in that place. Now they're in the promised land. But, you know, a lot of times God got to remind us of where we came from. Yeah. Remember when and why. I'm not saying go back to the past. I just say remember when and why are you are here now and where you are going. He said, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose this day. There's a lot of pastors and apostles and sisters and brothers deep down in the world that have turned their bodies away from God. There was one son that pointed their finger at you and said, oh, you think that's going to work out for you? Well, it didn't work out for you. It's going to work out for me because I know the God that I serve. Amen. God said, if I remain faithfulness and I trust him in everything, 
He said, he will give me desires to my heart if I diligently seek him. And Joshua, see, this is how Joshua was so much different from Moses in this sense. When he said this scripture right here, But as for me, in my house, we are gonna serve the Lord. That's it. That's it. See, Joshua, he couldn't go back and do like Moses when Moses rebelled and, and was disobedient. But God only allowed Moses to look at the promised land from a distance, and God took him away. He didn't die in the ground. God took him away, just like He did Elijah, just like He did Enoch. He walked and trusted God. God took him away. But Joshua said, "Look, look at me. I gotta have a warrior mentality." I, I am a commander. I got to lead these people over to the promised land. And if serving other God, if that's your desire to serve other gods, then so be it. But as for me and my house and my language and in my seed seed and the generation to come, my great, 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 great grandchildren from generation to generation to generation, we going to serve the Lord thy God. And we ain't going to ever change that. That scripture is ringing over every household in America, even all over the world. As for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. In spite of everything that goes on, 9-11, ISIS, terrorism over here. But as for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. My child left the house, got out there, did things in the world, got tired of eating the slop of the world, came back home and found that the house was still kept in order because as for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. I've been praying for you. I knew you was going to come back because of the faithfulness that I watched over my life. I have a faithfulness in God. But as for me and my house, you can go out there and serve, drink, smoke, pop pills, do what you want to do. But I know that by faith, you're going to come back because as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's it. That's it. My God. And we're going to continue to yes. serve him. Yes. Yes. As long as I got breath in my body, I'm going to serve the Lord. Because it is God who has brought us to the place where we get. The Romans 8 and 28 said, In all things work for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. All things work for your good. Because you love God and you've been called to his purpose. Keep your house in order. Keep praying in your house. Have more praying than you have TV on. Have more praise and worship going on on your phone or radio or whatever. Have it going on in the atmosphere more than you have other things going on. Your house is your sanctuary. Your house is your house of peace. Your house is the most holy of holy and as a woman, she is known as the dam. And what is a dam? A dam is something that keeps back water and flood. Mother, you are the dam of that family. The father is the shelter. We protect everything. But a woman of God, the mother, you are the dam. You keep back the flood. You keep back all of that, that worldliness and that, that seepfulness that's been trying to manipulate your child's mind and trying to manipulate their heart when some young man or some young woman get out there and they try to please them with words of nothing whispering in their ear. You keep that mess away. You pray for them. You lay hands on them. Let them understand the difference between love and lust. Come on, somebody. As a mother, we you protect it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because this is your house. And you serve the Lord. Yes. So 
Are you ready to go? Marching, come on. Stand in the right step. I got my garment of praise on. I got my swag on. I'm not out of step. You singing cadence, and I'm right in rhythm. Amen. I ain't missing a beat because I'm marching and I'm going into the promised land. Ain't nobody out of step because see, I've been trained to stay in step. I've been trained when I got weapon of warfare coming against me. You're not gonna get. You're not gonna get me to shake up. Yeah. You're not gonna ruffle my feather because I'm skilled. I'm a Joshua. I'm strong and I'm courageous, and I got victory through the name of Jesus Christ. So I'm going in. I'm going in to get everything that the enemy kept blind to my eyes and to my heart. I see it. I see it. I see it. It is before me. Because God's already said that he be for me. Then who else can be against me? He parted the Red Sea so I can walk across dry ground. Drown the enemies inside of the Red Sea. Kill the enemy. So they can't come and try to chase after you no more. Because we're going in. As I said last Sunday, that for every day, you should have been saying, I am born again. And I know in the spirit, I know everybody did. Continue to say, daily, I've been born again. I have a fresh anointing in my heart. I'm ready. I'm not so easy to persuade. When somebody's saying something, they come out of the Bible like, wait a minute, that's not in the Bible. You got to take a stand because God's going to hold you accountable. Well, I ain't go to church last Sunday, so I, I don't know. No, 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 no. Remember, he said, meditate on the word day and night, day and night. Meditate on the word. Know that you know that you know. But the enemy will come after you and know that you are thinking that you are weak in the word. Come on, don't let him see your sweat now. Don't let him see your sweat. Don't be trying to blow up past the phone trying to figure out, man, can I get a word today, Pastor? No. You better know that you know that you know. You better know the word of God. Because the enemy, he knows the word, but he don't obey it. He don't, he don't believe in the word of God. That's why he got rebellious. But you better know. When everything starts coming your way, and I'm not prophesying evilness. I'm talking about blessing. For God said, remember when and why. When he gets you there and gets you to that place. Everything come together as one. Don't forget about God. Come on, come on. Don't forget about the God you serve. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's give God a hand. Of Are you ready to go in? Yes. Are you ready to take yes. over? Yes. The enemy has already been defeated. Come on, come on. Let's go in. Let's go in. Next week is going to be better than last week. Come I guarantee you that. I'm prophesying that right now. Come on. Yes. Come on. It's getting better. It's getting better. You, you're going you're gonna to see it to believe it. Yes. You're going to see it to believe it. It's going to get better. Yes. Day by day, starting today, starting right now, you're going to have more than enough. Yes, Lord. Yes, God's going to give you everything that you need. Starting today, because of cause of your strength and your encouragement to go in and not be afraid of the enemy. Come on now. So I say this week, do something different that you've never done before. That's it. Right. It's supposed to feel uncomfortable. Come on. You're supposed to have a, a little slight tingling in your body. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do something you've never done before. That's it. Something good. And don't expose it and tell everybody. Come on, you can't go telling everybody your vision. When you tell somebody you had a dream about the vision that God gave you, people are going to snatch that vision away from you. Oh, did God say anything about me in that dream? Come on. I mean, you had anything God said about me? Come on. You go telling everybody your dreams and your vision? Come on now. Because you don't put them in there, they're going to like, I'm going to take that. Uh -huh. Then you wonder why you sitting up there like, man, I should not have told him. 